Juan Manuel Santos Calderón Spanish, XWAM Ma NWEL Santos Calderón, born 10 August 1951 is a former Colombian politician. From 2010 to 2018, he was the President of Colombia. He was the sole recipient of the 2016 Nobel Peace Prize. An economist by profession and a journalist by trade, Santos is a member of the wealthy and influential Santos family, who from 1913 to 2007 were the majority shareholders of the newspaper El Tiempo until its sale to Planeta Digestini in 2007. He was a cadet at the Navy Academy in Cartagena. Shortly after graduating from the University of Kansas, he joined the National Federation of Coffee Growers of Colombia as an economic advisor and delegate to the International Coffee Organization in London, where he also attended the London School of Economics. In 1981, he was appointed deputy director of El Tiempo newspaper, becoming its director two years later. Santos earned a mid-career, master's in public administration in 1981 from Harvard Kennedy School HKS and was a 1988 Nieman Fellow for his award-winning work as a columnist and reporter. Santos was a Fulbright Visiting Fellow at Fletcher at Tufts University in 1981. Santos served as a member and vice chair of the Washington-based think tank the Inter-American Dialogue and was president of the Freedom of Expression Commission for the Inter-American Press Association. In 1991, he was appointed by President César Gaviria Trujillo as Colombia's first Minister of Foreign Trade. Santos worked in expanding international trade with Colombia, and worked in creating various agencies for this purpose including, ProExport, Bancoldex and Fiducoldex. In 2000, he was appointed by President Andrés Pastrana Arango as the 64th Minister of Finance and Public Credit. Santos rose to prominence during the administration of President Álvaro Uribe Vélez. In 2005, he co-founded and led the Social Party of National Unity Party of the U, a liberal conservative party coalition that backed the policies of President Uribe, successfully supporting his attempt to seek a constitutional reform to be able to run for a second term. In 2006, after Uribe's re-election, when the party of the U won a majority of seats in the two chambers of Congress, Santos was appointed as Minister of National Defense, and continued defending the security policies of President Uribe, taking a strong and forceful stance against FARC and the other guerrilla groups operating in Colombia. Santos also created the Good Government Foundation. In 2010, Santos won the presidential election as the protege of his predecessor Álvaro Uribe Vélez. However, some months after Santos' possession, Uribe became his strongest opponent, who also founded, three years later, the opposition party Democratic Center. This rivalry determined both Santos' in popularity and his near-miss defeat during the presidential election in 2014 before Uribe's protege Oscar Ivan Zuluaga. On October 7, 2016, Santos was announced as recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize, for his efforts negotiating a peace treaty with the FARC guerrilla in the country, despite the unsuccessful referendum held over the deal, a no campaign led by Uribe's party Democratic Center. The Colombian government and the FARC signed a revised peace deal on November 24 and sent it to Congress for ratification instead of conducting a second referendum. Both houses of Congress ratified the revised peace accord on November 29-30, 2016, thus marking an end to the conflict. Juan Manuel Santos has been named as one of Time magazine's 100 most influential people. However, Santos left office with one of the lowest levels of popular approval ever, and his successor was the new Uribe's protege, Ivan Duque Marquez, a moderate critic of Santos' peace treaty with the FARC guerrilla. <laughs> Life and career Santos was born in Bogotá, Colombia. He attended Colegio San Carlos, a private secondary school in Bogotá, where he spent most of his school years until 1967, when he enlisted in the Colombian Navy and transferred to the Admiral Padilla Naval Cadet School in Cartagena, graduating from it in 1969, and continuing in the Navy until 1971, finishing with the rank of Naval Cadet Na 42 Z-139. After leaving the Navy, Santos moved to the United States where he attended the University of Kansas. A member of Delta Upsilon fraternity, he graduated in 1973 with a Bachelor in Economics and Business Administration. 
On October 31, 2017, Santos received an honorary doctorate of human letters from KU. After graduating from the University of Kansas, Santos served as chief executive of the National Federation of Coffee Growers of Columbia to the International Coffee Organization in London. During this time he also attended the London School of Economics, graduating with a Master of Science in Economic Development in 1975. He then attended the John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University, graduating with a Master of Public Administration in 1981. He returned to Colombia to become deputy director of his family-owned newspaper El Tiempo. Santos served as a member and vice chair of the Washington-based think tank The Inter-American Dialogue and was president of the Freedom of Expression Commission for the Inter-American Press Association, a Fulbright visiting fellow at the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy at Tufts University in 1981, and a Nieman Fellow at Harvard University in 1988. Santos also holds an honorary Doctor of Laws degree. He was Minister of Foreign Trade of Colombia during the administration of President César Gaviria Trujillo from 1991 to 1994, Minister of Finance and Public Credit of Colombia during the administration of President Andrés Pastrana Arango from 2000 to 2002. In 1992 he was appointed president of the Eight United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. In 1994 Juan Manuel Santos founded the Good Government Foundation, whose stated objective is helping and improving the governability and efficiency of the Colombian government. This organization presented a proposal for a demilitarized zone and peace talks with the FARC guerrilla group. Juan Manuel Santos has been named as one of Time magazine's 100 most influential people. Universidade Nova de Lisboa is granting the Honoris Causa doctorate title to Juan Manuel Santos. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Minister of Defense. Santos also founded the Social National Unity Party Party of the U to support the presidency of Álvaro Uribe. He was named Minister of Defense on the 19th of July 2006. During his tenure as defense minister, the administration dealt a series of blows against the FARC guerrilla group, including the rescue of Fernando Araujo Perdomo, the death of FARC secretariat member Raúl Reyes a controversial military raid on Ecuador's border, and the nonviolent rescue of former presidential candidate Ingrid Betancourt held captive since 2002, along with 14 other hostages, including three Americans. In 2008 the false positives scandal was uncovered, referring to revelations concerning extrajudicial executions carried out by members of the military in order to artificially increase the number of guerrillas killed by the army and claim rewards from the government. On 4 November 2008, Santos admitted that the military had carried out extrajudicial executions and he pledged to resolve the issue. Twenty-seven military officers, including three generals and eleven colonels, were sacked after an internal army investigation concluded that they were responsible for administrative failures and irregularities in reporting enemy casualties and operational results. The commander of the Colombian National Army, General Mario Montoya, resigned. By May 2009, 67 soldiers had been found guilty and over 400 were arrested pending trial. There are different estimates for the number of civilians who may have been killed in this manner. As of May 2009, prosecutors were investigating more than 900 cases involving over 1,500 victims and 1,177 members of the Colombian security forces. According to the Coordinación Colombia Europa Estados Unidos NGO Coalition and the Fundación para la Educación y el Desarrollo, an estimated 3,756 extrajudicial executions occurred between 1994 and 2009, of which 3,084 cases would have taken place after 2002. Families of the victims and non governmental organizations have held the Uribe administration and Santos, as defense minister, responsible for the extrajudicial kill killings because they consider that the government's reward policies motivated the crimes. Directive 029 of 2005 issued under Defense Minister Camilo Ospina Bernal and Presidential Decree 1400 of May 2006 have been questioned for offering incentives and benefits in exchange for capturing or killing members of illegal armed groups. In June 2009, United Nations Special Rapporteur Philip Alston declared that extrajudicial executions had been carried out in a more or less systematic manner, 
by numerous Colombian military personnel and found the number of trials for those implicated to be lacking, but stated that he had found no evidence of the executions being an official government policy and acknowledged a decrease in the number of reported cases. In March 2010, Santos publicly stated these executions had stopped since October 2008 and that this had been confirmed by the CINEP, one of Colombia's foremost human rights defense institutions. Semana, a well-respected weekly magazine, reported that a few days later the CINEP responded to Santos's declarations by issuing a press release which stated that, while the number of reported cases had been significantly reduced after the Defense Ministry's measures were announced, the period between November 2008 and December 2009 still saw seven such executions and two arbitrary detentions. Juan Manuel Santos announced his resignation from the Defense Ministry on 18 May 2009. Santos said that his resignation did not necessarily imply tossing his hat into the 2010 presidential race and that his participation in the electoral race depended on whether Uribe would pursue a third term, which he was willing to support. His resignation took effect on 23 May 2009. When the Constitutional Court ruled out the possibility of Uribe's participation in the upcoming elections, Santos officially launched his campaign for the presidency of the Republic of Colombia. Topic. President of Colombia On 20 June 2010, after two rounds of voting in the presidential election, Juan Manuel Santos Calderón was officially elected as President of Colombia and was inaugurated on 7 August 2010 in the midst of a diplomatic crisis with Venezuela, which was quickly resolved. Topic. Negotiations with FARC rebels Santos announced on 27 August 2012 that the Colombian government had engaged in exploratory talks with FARC in order to seek an end to the conflict. He also said that he would learn from the mistakes of previous leaders, who failed to secure a lasting ceasefire with FARC, though the military would still continue operations throughout Colombia while talks continued. According to an unnamed Colombian intelligence source, Santos offered FARC assurances that no one would be extradited to stand trial in another country. The move has been viewed as a cornerstone of Santos' presidency. Former President Uribe has criticized Santos for seeking peace, at any costs, in contrast to his predecessor's rejection of talks. In October 2012, Santos received the Shalom Prize, for his commitment to seeking peace in his country and worldwide. Upon accepting the award from the Latin American chapter of the World Jewish Congress, Santos stated that both the people here and the people in Israel have been seeking peace for decades, adding that Colombia is in favor of a two state solution to the Israeli Palestinian conflict. In September 2016, Santos announced that an agreement had been made completely settling the dispute between the Colombian government and FARC on the basis of a truth and reconciliation like process, in which a combination of complete admissions of guilt and community service on the part of perpetrators of misdeeds during the years of conflict would serve in place of retributive justice the 52 year colombian war has cost the country 152 billion usd according to conflict monitoring ngo indepaz within the last 5 years the daily cost of the war has escalated to 9.3 million united states dollars per day enough to feed 3 million people in colombia and wipe out extreme poverty in that country topic Relations with Trump administration In May 2017, Donald Trump and Santos held a joint news conference at the White House, where Trump praised Colombia's efforts to end a 52-year civil war that left more than 220,000 dead as a great thing to watch. Around that time, it was reported that Trump had an unusual meeting with former presidents Alvaro Uribe and Andres Pastrana. At his Florida resort Mar-a-Lago, lending weight to suspicion that Santos's political enemies were enlisting Trump's support against the historic peace accord. The event was widely reported in Colombia, yet never announced by the White House. In September 2017, Santos defended Colombia's record against U.S. President Donald Trump's complaints about what he called unacceptable growth in coca cultivation and production. Trump added that he considered downgrading the country in a White House assessment, which would result in reduced development and security funding. 
One source of contention is the restarting fumigation of agricultural areas with glyphosate, something Washington has backed and Colombia rejects. Due to the powerful herbicide's health effects on civilians and crops, Colombia defended its anti narcotics efforts after the threat of Donald Trump to decertify the country as a partner in counter narcotics efforts. In July 2018, Santos called on Trump to urge Russian leader Vladimir Putin to stop supporting Venezuela's authoritarian government. Santos has acknowledged that, in 2017, Trump raised the idea of a military invasion of Venezuela to drive out President Nicolas Maduro, which he and other Latin American leaders rejected at the time. Other views During a Google Hangout hosted by the Colombian newspaper El Tiempo on May 20, 2014, Santos voiced his support for same-sex marriage. Marriage between homosexuals to me is perfectly acceptable and what's more I am defending unions that exist between two people of the same sex with the rights and all of the same privileges that this union should receive," said Santos. Presidential campaigns 2014 presidential campaign On 20 November 2013, Santos announced his intent to run for re-election in a presidential address, and formalized his intent by filing election papers with the National Civil Registry on 25 November. As the incumbent president he ran virtually unopposed in the Social Party of National Unity Convention, receiving 772 votes of the 787 party delegates, and receiving the party's nomination on 28 January 2014. Santos and his allies also lobbied for the support of other political parties, receiving the nomination from the Liberal and Radical Change parties, forming the National Unity Coalition. On 12 March Santos officially launched his re-election campaign for the 2014 presidential election under the slogan, We have done much, there is much to be done. On 24 February, Santos announced that the running mate for his 2014 re-election campaign would be as German Vargas Leras, a veteran politician from one of Colombia's most powerful political dynasties, and his former Minister of Housing, City and Territory. The decision to replace Vice President Garzón as his running mate was an expected one, as Garzón had already announced his desire to retire from politics. On 15 May, Santos obtained 25.69% of the votes, falling behind his main rival, Oscar Ivan Zuluaga Escobar of the Democratic Center, who obtained 29.25% of the votes. Since no one candidate earned the required majority, a runoff election was announced. In the second round, Santos received the backing and support of his former electoral rival, Clara López Obregón of the Alternative Democratic Poll, as well from dissident members of the Conservative and Green parties. On 15 June, Santos won 50.95% of the popular vote in the second round of the election. President Santos addressed supporters and volunteers gathered at the campaign's headquarters in the Claustro de la Enseñanza after his re-election and said, this is the end of 50 years of conflict in this country, and it is the beginning of a new Colombia." Santos's victory, which was much smaller than his landslide result in 2010, was credited with strategic endorsements from left-wing politicians such as Clara López who appeared on a TV endorsement for Santos despite having nearly polar opposite views on many issues. This helped Santos, who had been neck and neck with his conservative challenger on polls up to the second election round. Many among the left whose fortunes had declined since the start of the FARC insurgency hoped a peaceful negotiation with FARC, which required a Santos victory, would help rehabilitate the left among the conservative liberal-dominated political scene in Colombia. <laughs> Payments from Brazilian conglomerate Odebrecht On March 14, 2017 Santos acknowledged that his 2010 election campaign received illegal payments from Brazilian conglomerate Odebrecht. <inaudible> Paradise Papers In November 2017, an investigation conducted by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalism claimed Juan Manuel Santos was in control of two offshore companies in Barbados. Following this, Santos clarified that he left the managing board of one of these companies in prior to holding a ministerial office. Family and personal life 
Santos was born on 10 August 1951 in Bogotá to Enrique Santos Castillo and his wife Clemencia Calderón Nieto. His brothers are, Enrique, Luis Fernando, and Felipe. The Santos family has been a well established and influential family since the mid 20th century. His great great grandaunt was Maria Antonia Santos Plata, a martyr of the independence of Colombia, and his great granduncle was Eduardo Santos Montejo, president of Colombia between 1938 and 1942, who acquired the national newspaper El Tiempo. From there, his family has been connected to the newspaper and influenced the political life of the country. Eduardo's brother, Enrique, grandfather of Juan Manuel, an editor in chief of El Tiempo, was known as Caliban to his readers, and his three sons, Enrique Juan Manuel's father and Hernando Santos Castillo, and Enrique Santos Molano, were chief editor, director, and columnist, respectively. Through his father's brother, Hernando, and his mother's sister, Elena, Juan Manuel is also first cousin on both sides to Francisco Santos Calderón, former vice president of Colombia during the previous administration from 2002 to 2010. Santos first married Silvia Amaya Londoño, a film director and television presenter, but divorced three years later having no children together. He then married Maria Clemencia Rodriguez Munera, or Tutina as she is known to those close to her, an industrial designer he had met while she worked as a private secretary at the Ministry of Communications and he was deputy director of El Tiempo. Together they had three children, Martín born 1989, María Antonia born 1991, and Esteban born 1993. Topic. Honors and awards Topic. Foreign nations Topic. International bodies 2016 Nobel Peace Prize Topic. International awards King of Spain Prize Peace Lamp of St. Francis of Assisi Global Statesman Award Guernica Award for Peace and Reconciliation Shalom Prize New Economy Forum Prize 2016 The Inter-American Dialogues Distinguished Lifetime Achievement Award for Peace National Geographic Society honors President Juan Manuel Santos of Colombia for his unwavering commitment to conservation. President Santos has done more than many elected leaders in the Americas to expand protected areas. Colombian President awarded Q International Medal for Work Protecting Biodiversity. Harvard Law School's 2017 Great Negotiator Award Tipperary International Peace Award 2017 Chatham House Prize Topic. New Colombian plant named after President Juan Manuel Santos A new plant species from northeastern Colombia has been named Espelicia presidentis, in honor of efforts made by President Santos to build peace. Topic. Selected works Santos Calderón, Juan Manuel 1994. Colombia sin fronteras, para un nuevo futuro. Bogotá, Colombian Ministry of Foreign Trade. OCLC 34283634. Santos Calderón, Juan Manuel 1994. El nuevo camino al progreso. Bogotá, Colombian Ministry of Foreign Trade. OCLC 253,690,673. Santos Calderón, Juan Manuel, Homs Rodríguez, Rudolf, et al., 1994. Prácticas Comerciales y Perspectivas Macroeconómicas. Bogotá, Clade. ISBN 9789589394. OCLC 318185414. Santos Calderón, Juan Manuel, Blair, Tony. La Tercera Vía, Una Alternativa para Colombia. Bogotá, Aguilar. ISBN 9789588061000. OCLC 318268059. 
Santos Calderón, Juan Manuel, Carasquilla Barrera, Alberto 2000. Memorias de Hacienda. Bogotá, Colombian Ministry of Finance and Public Credit. OCLC 318238583. Santos Calderón, Juan Manuel 2009. Jack Al Terror, Los Años Horribles de los Foc 2nd, Illustrated. Ed. Bogotá, Planeta. ISBN 9789584223. OCLC 605944076. References External links Presidencia de Colombia Biography Biography at Columbia Reports Biography at CIDOB Foundation Appearances on C-SPAN. Juan Manuel Santos Collected News and Commentary. The New York Times. Taking Colombia to the Next Level, Latin Business Chronicle, 9 August 2010.